Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allison and this is the Furniture Flippin' Family. I love being able to redo furniture, repurpose furniture, give furniture a new life. You will see today that this piece, which matches the bedside table that we did last week, has taken a beating. And so, we are going to do a part one and a part two for this chest of drawers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use putty and bondo to make a piece of trim for the drawer. I am missing a piece of trim in one of the drawers and so I have to totally make a brand new piece to go on there so that the drawer looks brand new. Also, I have to fix some of the veneer that has come off of the back on the top of the dresser. And so you'll see how we do that. So this video is how to fix and prep your furniture before painting. And then the next video will be how to paint. All right, let's get started in just a minute. But before we do, please consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I hope you enjoy today's Creative Flipping. Here is the beauty we will be working on. The chest of drawers that I got from my grandparents' house and then it was at my mom's house. As you can see, it's got several dings, some places that are definitely gonna need fixing on the front. And then when you look inside, the drawers still look pretty good except for a few spots. And then you can see that the dresser is made by Drexel which is a really fine manufacturing company from long ago. It's got the dovetail drawers. The drawers still work. They slide in and out just fine. You can see the top is taking a nice little beating, but just wait. Over here, you see there's some missing veneer that I'm gonna have to fix. And it's totally come off. Lots of scratches. Then over here you can see that it was beside my mom's treadmill and definitely took a beating over there. So we're going to have to work on that side too. So we've got a lot of work cut out for us, but I know we can get it done. And here it is again. Really is beautiful. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is take off the hardware. Now you can see I'm having a lot of trouble with this handle. Yay! I was so excited and I was like, what in the world? Why wouldn't it come off? and I couldn't figure it out. I think it's just been on there for so long that it didn't want to come out. We're almost finished. Puggers is trying to help me. Yay! All right, now we've taken all the drawers out and it is time to clean. I'm going to use my Super Clean again. It has a degreaser in it. And really, you can use anything, even water and Dawn dishwashing liquid, as long as it's got a degreaser. You would not believe how dirty this, fur this furniture can get. Just after years of wear and tear, even though you've been cleaning it. Now 
Once you have finished cleaning, then you want to just take some water and you want to get all the chemicals off and then take a towel and dry it. So that's what you see me doing right here. I'm just wiping it down with some water to make sure that all the chemicals are not on there. While I was cleaning, I happened to find a drawer that was missing some trim. So right here, I'm using my Minwax wood filler and I'm filling in where it was missing because in just a little while, I'm going to have to make a new piece of trim. Now, when I saw this, I thought, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? There is no trim. And then I remembered, I had just seen a video on Furniture Fables by Andy Klein. If you have not seen her, please go over to her channel. She is wonderful and has lots of really good ideas. Well, I had just seen her fixing trim. And so I went, rushed back, watched it again, and then I thought, hmm, I think I can do this. So I decided to try it. So here's our first step. So first thing I'm gonna do now that it's dry is I'm gonna sand it. So that's what you see, I'm sanding this first drawer. I'm gonna get everything level before I put the new piece of trim on. And then I'm just scuff sanding the rest of it. Once you finish your scuff sand, then you wanna make sure that you get all of that dust off. I like to use my microfiber sponge and just some water and get all of the dust off. And then I take my microfiber cloth and dry it. Now it's time for the exciting part, the amazing mold putty. So again, I saw this on Andy Klein's channel, Furniture Fables, and I'll have that link down below in the descriptions. So I ordered exactly what she did. So you take the two types of putty, take about equal amounts of both, and you mix them together really good. See, one's white, one's yellow. Mix them together, and it's really pretty soft. I was surprised at that. As my children would say, it was quite satisfying. It was kind of like that putty and all of the stuff that they loved to fidget with. So I really didn't mind playing with it. So mold it all together. And then I would took the twin drawer of it and I was gonna mold a piece of that Trim. So I was going to make the mold out of that piece of trim. All right, and here I realized, oops, maybe I didn't get enough. So I got a little more white and a little more yellow and I got to mix again. Now I was excited and nervous at the same time. I love a challenge, so this is gonna be so fun for me to get to do something new with um, redoing and refinishing furniture. So I was really excited about this challenge. But then I was nervous too, because obviously, what if it doesn't work? So I kept going back and forth, you know, making sure, reading all the directions, making sure I was doing everything right, because this is my first time to do this. All right, so I just made sure that it was on the piece of trim. Of course, I wanted it to be perfect, so I kept messing with it. Then I just left it alone, and I let it set. And I did let it set for um, several hours, and then I went down to check it, and I was so excited and so nervous. Here it comes, 
and look, it worked, it worked, it worked. Now, step two, Bondo Wood Filler. Now, this is my first time to use it, and it does have a very strong odor. So you take some of this, and I put it out on a piece of cardboard to mix it together. And I'm just using a craft stick. Then you take the hardening that's in the tube, it's a little red thing, just put one little line through it. And then you mix it up really good. Now, Bondo dries really quick. I found out, I read it, and I thought, oh, it can't dry that quick. Really? Oh my gosh, it dries really quick. So, if you're not going to use it right then, don't mix it up. All right, so then I just used my popsicle stick and I put it in the mold. Now, I kept layering it on there just to make sure I had pressed it all the way down in the mold. And then, of course, I didn't just put it right there. I just I kind of put it up over the whole thing. This was really kind of fun, too. You know, I mean, it was just exciting to do something new. Now, once I finished, which I'm almost finished, I kept going over and over it. Just wanted it to be perfect. Okay, Allison, come on. <laughs> I just keep going and going and going. All right, so now I figured out I need to put it somewhere to dry. So while that was drying, then I decided that I would put some Bondo where all of that veneer had come off. And you can see the further I get, the clumpier it gets because it started drying. So it does dry really fast, but I gave this about an hour just to make sure that it was completely dry. And here is the moment of truth. It worked. Yeah, I was so excited. And look, there's that extra space around there. And all we're going to do is just peel that off. Be very careful. See, I was nervous about that too. And then what I couldn't get off. Yeah, when I really started getting nervous, I got the scissors out because I did not want to break this after I had worked so hard making the mold and making the piece of trim. So I used my scissors just to kind of clean it up, get everything off. Now, how is it going to look? Now it's time to see. All right, it worked. Now it was a little long and that's okay. And I knew I was gonna have to clip off that piece right there so that it would all attach, but it was gonna work. It was gonna work perfect. I was so excited. Then I used my small paintbrush and some wig glue and put it on the back to glue it onto the drawer. Voila, looks better, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. Now I used a little bit of painter's tape to hold it into place while it dried. Now, while that is drying, I am going to sand where we were missing the veneer. Of course, it was already dry because that Bondo dries really fast as I showed you. Now you'll notice that I keep running my hand over it. I'm just trying to, to, to see each time how smooth I'm getting that. I 
I really made this thick because I wanted to build it up so that when I sanded it, I could make sure that I made it all level. And it, I can definitely say it was harder to get off than I had anticipated. But I was definitely glad that I built it up. I can say I started getting a little worried that I was gonna take it down too far. So I decided to scuff sand the rest of the top. I'm gonna be painting that chocolate, but I always wanna scuff sand just to make sure that it has something to, the paint has something to adhere to. The Fusion Mineral Paint says you do not have to sand or anything like that, but I always like to do it just in case, and it's just a, a scuff sand. You can see now that my sander is different. I did go to Lowe's and get an orbital sander. I've seen lots of people using those, and I wanted to see the difference between the detail sander and the orbital sander and how it did the scuff sanding. And I can say that at first, of course, I was nervous using the orbital sander, but I definitely like it. Here you see me doing the sides. Now on the front, I am using a hand sander. So I have a sanding block and then I put the 220 grit over the sanding block and that's what I'm using on the front. And I used a 220 grit on the other two sanders too to do the scuff sanding. Getting in those creases was a little more difficult. So I did take the sandpaper off and fold it up and get in those creases. Then once you finish sanding, you need to make sure that you wipe down your surface and get all of the dust off of it. Once you've done that, you are ready to start painting. So we're gonna stop our video right here. Let's recap what we did in this video. One, we used the Amazing Putty to make a mold. Two, we used the Bondo to put in the mold to actually make the new piece of trim for the drawer. We used some wood glue to put the trim on there. And then we used the detail sander and the orbital sander to scuff sand. And don't forget, whenever you have scuff sanded, you always need to wipe your furniture down to get all of that dust off of your furniture before you paint because you definitely don't want that in your paint. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make trim new. I hope you got a lot out of it and I hope that you liked seeing how to make new trim and how to repair some veneer when the veneer is really messed up. I loved trying all the new things that I tried today. And just remember, this was part one. This was making things new or repairing your furniture and prepping it to paint. So part two is going to be painting the furniture. I can't wait for that. That will be next week. And I can't wait to see how the chest of drawers and the bedside table look together. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the notifications so you know when I've uploaded a new video. Please join me again next week for some more creative flipping.